Hi, my favorite short story is um, The Husband Stitch by Carmen Maria Machado, and it's uh, to be found in Granta magazine or in her collection of short stories, um, My Body and Other Parties. Machado is alleged to have a tattoo on her bicep, and the tattoo reads, um, it's a quote from the author, uh, Kelly Link, and it says, she didn't look back, but stepped off the edge of the known world. And to me, that is what it's like to inhabit a Machado short story. The title of the story, The Husband Stitch, gets, um, is slang for that extra stitch that's done after childbirth um, to the vagina to make it a uh, tighter for the sexual pleasure of the partner and um, it's often done uh, without either the knowledge or consent of the woman and indeed our narrator has a husband stitch done which is a collusion between her doctor and her husband and when she tries to um, respond uh, when they're discussing this she can't be heard because she's under the anesthetic and it actually takes her a full year to recover from um, this very painful procedure. The story also um, uses as its premise um, a very simple plot taken from a French fairy tale and it's about a couple called Jenny and Alfred who've known each other since childhood. And for as long as she can remember, Jenny has a green ribbon tied around her neck. And it's something she does not explain or wish to um, share with anyone. But Alfred is very insistent on knowing about this um, green ribbon. It is only on her deathbed that she finally allows the ribbon to be touched and indeed to be untied. And when it is untied, her head falls off. So it's a pretty nasty fairy tale, but then, you know, so many fairy tales are. And Machado uses this um, simple plot um, to weave an incredible story that um, blends myth, folklore, urban legend with a very straightforward narration of a woman's life, but it's no ordinary woman. And we know this from the first sentence. Um, it starts with the most incredible first sentence. In the beginning, I know I want him before he does. This isn't how things are done, but this is how I am going to do them. So she has this biblical reference in the beginning and she immediately tells us that there is danger in the way that our narrator, our unnamed narrator, is going to live her life. She chooses her husband at the age of 17. And the story is about their life together, um, they, uh, their courtship, their marriage, the birth of their son. And it, it goes until the son um, leaves for college and they have a sort of renewed sexual interest in each other. And, um, and that's the end. In all of this, we learn really about the body, the female body, its ownership, um, its fragility, the misogyny to which it is subjected. And it's, it's just a very disconcerting story, but utterly compelling. Um, for example, um, when she's little, she swears that she sees toes in among some potatoes at a grocery store. And her father sort of argues with her very logically about why that could not have happened. The greengrocer would have seen it. Why would the greengrocer do this? And the final most devastating argument is that 
if it was so, someone else would have seen it. And this really is, is the premise of so much of what she, um, she raises in the story, that women are not believed often until their story is collaborated by someone else. So a singular truth that you may know um, may never be enough. Um, she also has these odd um, stage directions in a short story, bizarre, but she starts off by telling you um, how you should read the voices and it's very telling that um, her voice must be read as a child, high-pitched, forgettable, as a woman, the same. All other women should be re read in a voice interchangeable with my own. So our voices are not heard. And you don't have to be um, a feminist to see how political her tract is um, throughout the story. But it is done with such humour and world creation in the story that you are utterly mesmerised. I can't recommend it enough. Um, maybe I could just um, say uh, one other thing um, about the story and um, the green ribbon. She thinks she's unique in having this green ribbon until she goes to an art class. And in the art class, she meets other women who have ribbons. There is one with a yellow ribbon around her finger, another with a red ribbon around her ankle. And so there is also a sisterhood of others who are equally um, frail and marked in some way. Her husband, she says, is not a, a bad man and indeed Throughout the story, he seems, you know, he's a, he's a caring husband, he's um, a good father, and yet he is insistent on knowing the meaning of the green ribbon, and he won't let it go. And finally, she says, okay, if you insist, and you insist, and you insist, I will let you untie the green ribbon. And of course, we know that with the untying of the green ribbon, her head falls off. Thank you.